Hi, my name is Alon of the Starkware Industries engineering team. And today I'm going to show you a hands-on example of how to work with Cairo. From writing code to publishing a proof via Sharp, our online shared prover service, and ultimately using it in an Ethereum D app. If you have no prior experience with Cairo, we highly recommend you refer to some of our tutorials at cairo-lang.org. All the resources you need to learn how to code with Cairo can be found there. We will, of course, include links in the description below. A few words about the Cairo language. It is designed for efficiency on top of Starks. Cairo's memory is immutable. Once a memory cell was written to, it cannot be changed thereafter. Unlike conventional languages, the native type in Cairo is a field element. This means that sometimes, if you are not careful, you might get weird results for computations. Today we will see how to avoid such instances. Cairo as a language is still young. The Starkware team are constantly working to introduce new features and quality of life improvements, so be on the lookout for updated versions of the Cairo toolbox. To make Cairo even more efficient, we use specialized components called built-ins. Each built-in provides an efficient way to run some non-trivial computation or task. This includes hashes, signature verifications, and even rain checks and output. Another important building block of Cairo is the dictionary, a Cairo standard library construct that simulates the usage of a regular mutable dictionary. Lastly, a most recent update to the Cairo language is implicit arguments, which we will dive more closely into in the hands-on example. With that out of the way, let's jump into our code. Here is our simple automatic market maker example, written in Cairo code, which can be found under our Hello Cairo tutorial. The AMM's purpose is to automatically facilitate traders' requests to swap between different types of assets. To that end, it holds a liquidity pool for each supported asset, backed by registered liquidity providers. Before we start, let's take a brief overview of the code at hand. At the top, you can see the use of imports from the standard library. This here is the AMM state. It is a struct representing the state of our AMM. The fields token A balance and token B balance represent the liquidity held by the AMM for two kinds of assets, denoted A and B. Currently, our AMM supports only two kinds of assets for this example. Note that the AMM always strives to keep the product of these two assets at some constant. The account dict start and account dict end fields are how we use a Cairo dictionary. This dictionary represents a mapping between account IDs to their corresponding account data, represented by the account struct up here. This here is an example of how to encode constants in Cairo. Max balance represents the maximum balance permitted for any account. This is important for safe math operations to avoid overflows. The modify account function gets an account ID and modifies its balances. Recall that Cairo's memory is immutable so we cannot actually overwrite the information in the current AMM state. Instead, this function writes and returns a new state with the updated information. You'll note that rain check pointer, which is used for the rain check built-in, is passed in curly brackets here. This is Cairo's implicit arguments feature. It allows the programmer to use functions that require this built-in, such as this function, assert non-negative less equal, which checks that a number is within a given range without constantly maintaining the rent check PTR manually. On to our swap function. For the purpose of this tutorial, I removed the body of the swap function 
which we will re-implement now. This function should facilitate a request to swap an amount of a given asset for another. For this purpose, we need the rain check PTR, passed implicitly here, the previous state, from which to verify the transaction's validity, and the swap transaction itself, represented by an appropriate struct up here. The swap transaction simply contains the ID of the account that is initiating the transaction, along with the amount of assets of type A they wish to swap. For the purpose of this exercise, we will only support swaps from A to B, but you're welcome to expand this implementation as you see fit for your purpose. First things first, we want to verify that the given transaction is valid. We verify that the amount requested to swap is within range, zero to max balance. This is done to avoid overflows. This is common practice with values we plan to use for mathematical computations. Note we don't have to explicitly verify the account ID in this case, since we're going to call the modify account function, which already verifies it. Next, we need to compute the amount of tokens of type B the user gets for this transaction. As mentioned before, the AMM state should keep the product of the amounts A and B at some constant. Let's lay this out. We'll denote with A0 times B0 the product before applying the given transaction. Thus, after applying the changes, we should maintain this equation with diff A representing the difference in liquidity for token A and diff B representing the difference in liquidity for token B. Therefore, and you can check my math, we end up with diff B, which is the value we're interested in, equals the product B0 and diff A divided by A0 plus diff A. This is the amount we want to return to the user. Note that if we use the division operator slash in Cairo, we will get division of field elements, which won't produce the result we require. Since we want to perform integer division in this case, we will use the standard library function unsigned div rem. We will name the result token b amount. Next, we want to make sure the resulting token B amount does not exceed max balance. So once again, we use the assert non-negative less equal function. Now that we computed and validated the amount of token B the user should receive, we just need to apply the transaction. For this, we will invoke the modify account function. This function will further verify that the account ID is valid and will provide us with the user key and updated AMM state. As return values will denote state and key. Even though state was already referenced in the function call referring to the previous state, what we're doing here is called reference rebinding, whereby we state that from this point on, the reference state refers to the updated state returned from modify account. At this point, in a real setting, we would want to verify the user's signature against the given transaction. In essence, we can use an ECDSA built-in using the public key and some hash on the transaction. Currently, we will skip this step as it goes slightly beyond the scope of this example. After modifying the user's account, we now want to update the AMM's liquidity accordingly, since we swapped a few token Bs for As. For this, we will declare a new state and start filling it out accordingly. For the new state, we'll simply copy the account dict start and account dict end values from state. Remember that due to reference rebinding, 
state now refers to the updated state after applying the transaction to the accounts. As for balances, we add the amount of token A's deducted from the user's account and remove the previously computed amount of token B's given to the user in return. As usual, we check that the resulting balances are each within range, non-negative and below max balance. Finally, we need to return the new state. Now that our program is complete, let's use our toolbox to compile and run it. Using Cairo Compile, we compile the program, generating a compiled file called ammcompiled.json. With Cairo Run, we can run the program. Note the layout flag. The simple layout allows us to make use of the rain check and output built-ins in our code. And there we have our result. The numbers we see here represent, in order, the amounts of token A and token B before applying the transaction, the amounts after, and the roots of the account's Merkle tree before and after. These represent the AMM state. This output can be interpreted as a sort of fact. If the previous state was represented by these balances and this root, then the transition to this new state is valid. This concept is what we rely on for the use of SHARP, our shared prover service. This service receives this information on a Cairo program's run and publishes a corresponding fact on chain. With Cairo SHARP, we can use the SHARP service to submit a fact of our simple AMM program run on Ropesden, the Ethereum testnet. Once the job is submitted to the service, we receive a hash representing our fact here, which any verifier can use to assert that our program ran correctly. Here, we can see the SHARP contract via Etherscan. Using the isValid function here, we input our fact and get true if the contract registered it, which only happens if the submitted job was valid. So how would we use this in an Ethereum D app? Here, we have a simple example of how to write an Ethereum smart contract to communicate with our Cairo code and verify facts on the Sharp contract. Our contract contains the state of the AMM, comprised of the account's root and the amounts for each supported token. Note that in this case, most of the information itself, in particular, the various account informations, are maintained off-chain, saving us valuable storage space on-chain. Our contract also holds our Cairo program hash and the address of the Starkware verifier. Note that the verifier's code is open source, so anyone can maintain their own verifier. To update the state, we wrote the update state function here. This function receives the output of our program. I remind you, it is the output we saw here when we ran the program. This function will compute the output hash and the fact. With the fact in hand, we're able to query the verifier contract to make sure that the fact is valid. If a corresponding fact is registered on chain, we now know the given program output represents a valid state transition. But in order to make sure the transition indeed originated from our current state, we compare the previous state's balances given in our program output to the balances recorded in our smart contract state. Assuming everything checked out, we can safely move to the new state, also given in the program output. It's just that simple. With that, we conclude this tutorial. 
For more information, tutorials, and tools, visit cairo-lang.org. On behalf of the StarCore team, we hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. All the best.